Agent Wright, you're here. Oh, thank God. Oh, uh, well, I survived. But the rest of my team, they weren't so lucky. We... we pulled up at a gas station just outside of Patel. Just as we were pulling out, something... I think a bear appeared next to the van. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but something was definitely there. Finley, the driver, he started to have a panic attack. He thought it was chasing us. We tried to get him to calm down, but he wouldn't stop speeding. I offered to drive, but he refused to stop. Someone grabbed the wheel. It might have been me. Then everything went black. I woke up. Finley. Miller. Gant. They were all dead. I guess I was the lucky one. Gone. I think he killed Gant and escaped. Don't know why he spared me. Maybe he thought I was dead. I thought he might be hiding behind the store. He definitely didn't head into town, and there's nothing that way for miles. Well, if I'm gonna sit here and wait for him, not after what that monster did to Gant! Uh, my head hurts, but nothing I can't deal with. Thanks for the help, Agent Wright. I'm... <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Well, I guess until the cavalry arrives, it's just the two of us. Be too hasty, Agent. If you fire a shot, my hand might slip. Please don't call me that. All this will do. As for your reinforcements, perhaps they'll meet the same sorry fate as our van on the way to the tail. Do you really think it was a bear, Jones? I don't know. I didn't get a good look. Well, I did. As did the poor driver of that van. He knew what he'd seen. And if you ask me, he acted quite appropriately. I don't think you'll believe me, and I wouldn't blame you. But I don't think that creature we encountered is documented in any science book. A priori, the only word to describe it is... Monster. Oh, come on! Thank you. 
So you see, Agent, there are monsters nearby much more dangerous than I. Truly, Agent, I would not advise trying to shoot me in these circumstances. I can feel it, too. There's an energy here. Or perhaps... a calmness. It's like standing in the eye of a storm. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Of course you don't. You're a close-minded fool. Although... I'm surprised you feel it, too, Agent. What was your name again? Tempting, but I must decline, even if the odds of escape were in my favor. The truth is that I don't want to run away from the tale. Whatever is about to happen, I want to be here when it does. happening. There's some sort of mechanism on the left and right side, like a laser sensor. Erica? I just wanted it. Hey, hey, don't you worry. I'm fine. You hear? You're the one I'm worried about. I think you're in shock or something. Look, just calm down, okay? I'll assess the situation.
Please return to your residence, sir. We will investigate these towers and... Why, you! Nobody move, except you, whoever you are. Perfect. Steve, try walking past those towers. I said start walking. The fuck? Thought so. <sighs> Fine. Well, let the record show I did not kill Steve Flemings. The towers did. We'll see about that in court, you fucking psychopath! Doubtful. Look around you. I believe we're surrounded. Rise and shine, sweetheart. Six o'clock sharp. <sighs> you really need to go to bed earlier, darling. Well, maybe you should talk to Nurse Kathleen. Why not? I'm sure plenty of people have had trouble sleeping since the contingency. What do you mean? But it's clearly bothering you. You should try to fix it. You probably just need a better diet. Maybe more exercise. Hey, we could even go a couple rounds if you want. Then you'll feel right as rain. See you at the office? Oh, right. So I guess I'll see you after you check on him.
Deputy Wright. I suppose you're here to take account of my whereabouts the last two days. Actually, the other day, I felt a little urge to get punched in the face, but I resisted. here, though I did raise my voice a bit over a very large late fee. One day these people will figure that out. Until then, I have my one way to ensure that this meager collection of books remains mostly intact. It's funny, I never thought I would be so protective of trashy romance novels and airport spy fiction. Just the library and my house, as usual. What did you just say? I'm too smart to get in trouble? So, you two are still... You have your question, I have mine. We always give the same answers, though I suspect we both hope to hear something different. You say that, but I can tell that some part of you would savor the excitement if I suddenly snapped and became the monster you claim I am. I had a broken leg, three broken ribs, and a collapsed lung. I would have confessed to raising the towers if it got me away from him. What? You don't want to witness another pummeling? That's sweet. I expect you to believe I'm not the greatest evil here in Bateo. You said it, not me. He snapped. Sure. We all have our breaking points. No. He was not the evil I meant. We can't examine the towers without losing our heads. But there's something else in the tale. Something under our noses, waiting to be discovered. Can't you feel it, Erica? What is it? Is this feeling like the one you had before we watched Tower split the Earth? Please, tell me more. What form does this feeling take? Do you have visions of some kind? Dreams? What happens in the dreams? It's not ridiculous, Erica. Or perhaps it is. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. You and I are connected by whatever force lifted the towers. We both sent something before they pierced the sky on the day of the contingency. No, quite the opposite. I mean the entropy that unravels the universe. You must embrace nonsense to make sense of anything. Well, it's part of my charm. Now, does our great and terrible sheriff require anything more of me? I assume he'll worry if you take too long. His shame will only increase his hatred for me, Erica. 
His shame is why he broke my legs and ribs. He didn't hurt me because of anything I did. He hurt me because of what he didn't do. He stayed back when they attacked the towers, and because of that, he's still alive. He had to prove himself. You're still not going to tell. I hope you can sleep peacefully soon, Deputy Wright. But when you wake up, for real, then I hope you come find me. Hold on. Jesus Christ, Erica, what's the rush? As I told Mrs. Murdoch, I think we're too late to stop those teens from sleeping together. What? What do you mean? Hey, hold up just a second and...
could have walked if you're just gonna stand there. Whoa, this does look like a teenage hovel. <clears throat> Hello, Sheriff Jones here. Game's over, kids. Time to go home. Um, I'll search down here then. Holy fuck. What the hell could have done this? An animal? How did you know about this? What's going on here? What do you mean you never saw it? Speak plainly, Erica! So you're saying you can see the fucking future? Jesus Christ. I should have known better than to try and reason with dream logic. Two kids are dead, Erica. If your dreams were useful, we might have gotten here in time to save them. And who's that? Oh, sure. Why don't you just go back to bed? Have some more dreams, huh? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll tell Jessica and Gary Sparrows they're both fucking dead. Hello. 
Officer, is something wrong? No. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. You must be here to see Madeline. Unfortunately, Maddie's busy right now, but I'm happy to deliver a message if you have one for her. My name is Julian Batale. That's right. And you are... So then, Deputy, what sort of business did you have with Madeline? Perhaps it's something I could help with instead? Why has something happened? Well, I'm a Batale. This is my family's town, so anything that happens here is my concern. Hello? Yes, yes. I'm here. She's here, but as I told you, she's busy. Come back another time. Perhaps you don't understand your position, Deputy. I could get you fired for disrespecting me. <laughs> In that case, I'll talk to Mayor Ward. Julian? What's going on? This is getting tiresome. Leave now, Deputy Wright, or I promise you will regret it. Er... Erica... Why are you really here, Erica Wright? What... what is it you think you know? In that case, you know nothing of consequence. But I can't leave you here all the same. I'm sorry, Erica Wright.
You can't. You can't possibly. You... You... What? What just happened? My end? Don't go, Carrie. Oh, uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't. My memory scrambled. What's going on? Why are you here? Are you saying he's, like, a vampire? <laughs> wow! You really are batshit crazy! <laughs> What do you mean, remember? How do you know any of this? This is crazy. I, I just don't get it. Even if there were some magical power sending you visions, why me? How am I important? Why would you even know about... Carry. Oh. Look, it's Erica, right? This is a lot to take in, whether it's real or not. But Julian's innocent. I'll help show you that. He's a good person. We... We just talked, and... Marm...
<sighs> I'm just... I'm so confused. But what will you do next? Okay, then I'll go with you. Listen, whether I believe you or not, something weird is going on here. I want to get to the bottom of it. And if Julian Batale's involved, I need to find the truth. I want to clear his name. But if what you're saying is true, and he has been manipulating me this whole time, then I want to smash his fucking face in. Why? Who is it? You have to be kidding me. This is that serial killer, right? Hmm? What? How can I help you? Deputy Wright, is it already next Tuesday? Forgive me, but the task of sorting four returned books was not sufficiently riveting this morning. Ah, what a coincidence. I feel hungover. What the hell am I doing here? Good question. I don't believe we've been properly introduced. I'm aware, aka The Heartbreaker. A regrettable nickname. Thanks, I guess. You're saying that Julian Batale bit her arm? Oh. Hmm. Can you confirm what Deputy Wright is saying, Maddie? Did Julian Batale bite you? I don't know. My memories of what happened when Erica came in are all... blurry. Interesting. That does sound a bit like vampire magic from stories. I don't know what to think, but I hope I can prove you wrong because the alternative is ridiculous. Erica, look at me. You're not insane. You're enlightened. And if you let me, I can help you figure out what's happening. Listen to your dreams. Write them down. Every detail. I will help you decipher them. Whatever is happening to you, Erica, it is personal. That doesn't mean it's not important. After all, does anything exist beyond your own consciousness? Dreams are born of memories. Dreams link matter to mind, form to metaphysics. They also function like a time-traveling machine for your soul. Are you really going to take advice from this guy? 
Why did you follow her here, Maddie, if you don't believe her? Surely you witnessed something that made you wonder if Erica's vision contained truth. She... she knew things she couldn't have possibly known about my personal history. Ha! <laughs> Why do you think you knew those things, Erica? Close how? Please, be specific. I see. Very interesting. And do you feel like this has already happened, or will happen? A parallel universe. Uh, what now? Several philosophers have theories of a so-called multiverse, containing every combination of space, time, energy, and so on, superpositioned. However, I especially like the theories of sci-fi writer Michael Moorcock, who wrote about the eternal champion appointed to maintain balance in every world and age of the multiverse. My point, Erica Wright, is that your consciousness somehow managed to break free of the linear timeline. You've achieved a new level of awareness, both thrilling and terrifying. And you need my help to decipher it. Write down your dreams and visions, like I told you. Write them all. Then, bring them to me, and I will help you figure out what to do next. Ah, uh, um, I'm curious, too. I still don't know if I believe any of this, but I want to see where it leads. I'll do what I can to help. Thank you, Terry. I'll take it from here. What are you doing here, Erica? I've been looking all over for you. Huh? Spit it out. She's investigating an assault. On me. Someone assaulted me. See? Oh. I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Maddie. My name's Maddie. It's nice to meet you, Maddie. Sorry I couldn't be under better circumstances. I'm Sheriff Bradley Jones. Is this man the one who assaulted you? No, no, it wasn't him. Really? Who was it? I, uh, I don't... What does any of this have to do with August fucking Flynn? Well then stop wasting your time here. I need your help on the Murdoch case, okay? I'd say that's a little more important than an assault. Uh, no offense, ma'am. An untaken. What the fuck are you looking at? Who? Me? Yeah, you. Shitface. You have anything you want to say about two brutally murdered teenagers? No. Really? Because it occurs to me, now that I'm looking at your ugly mug, you're a pretty good suspect. How were we ever stupid enough to let a serial killer work in the school library? Did you spot them in here, pervert? Is that what inspired you to kill again? No. I'm not sure what's really going on here, Erica, but I'm glad you reminded me about this sicko. He's a prime suspect. I don't give a shit about the fucking parole agreement. Two kids are dead! Turn around and get on your knees, August Flynn. You're under arrest.
I didn't do anything. You can't just... Yes, but this... he's... <laughs> I... I was going to question one of Jessica's high school friends, Sarah Carpenter. Fine. We'll put him back in the precinct for now. But then I want to find somewhere. Somewhere more permanent to jail him. Somewhere I don't have to stare at his ugly fucking face ever again. I, um, I could walk to the precinct with you, if you want. But what about your visions? What should we do next? Hey, don't talk like that. I didn't get dragged into this just for you to give up all of a sudden, okay? I don't accept it. I'll come by City Hall tomorrow morning to talk with you about the next steps, okay? Both of you, I want to figure out what the hell is going on with the Patels and your visions. Got it? 